asking. Welcome, everybody. I think um, uh, Mr. Mehta already set the ball rolling for this discussion. There was so much in his talk about uh, um, uh, digital marketing. Um, welcome. Welcome to all the panelists. I think digital is, is here whether we like it or no. Um, earlier, everybody used to just watch television. I think today people watch YouTube videos of people watching television. Then they make reels out of it. Then they put it on Instagram. And then the reels are soon trending. And I think that's just here to stay. Um, Within the health and uh, wellness and pharma space, I think we've been a little bit uh, slow in adopting uh, digital marketing, probably because um, this is one of the segments which needs to be very responsible, very accountable, and a lot of compliances are there in place. Um, so I think we've been slow, cautious, um, and, but very well-meaning because it's about the lives of people. Now, within this, within, uh, staying within the compliances and the regulatories and being responsible, several marketeers have made uh, a very good start and have um, driven the digital marketing space very relentlessly. And uh, we are here to hear from them today. And we'll set the ball rolling with uh, what's happening with the latest digital trends and what are the newest digital trends. I think we'll start with uh, uh, Atul, how about, how about you? Hi. So uh, there's this funny thing about digital trends. Uh, you know, uh, if I were to get into the, the buzzword of the season, which is chat GPT and say, okay, digital trends, kya hai? It's, they'll straight away bark at you, you know, IoT, blockchain, AI, ML. But those are not trends, those are tools. And I tell my teams often that whenever you think of trends, think about who that person is, that patient, you know, for pharma, it's a patient for wellness, it could be any human being. What is happening to that human being? What are the trends that you see with that person? Because we're talking digital marketing here, who is it for? It's for that guy or girl over there. So let's look at what are the causal factors the behaviors of those people, that will automatically dictate the trends. And today, anything can be applied, digital can be applied to anything. So we're all marketeers here, I assume. And you know, marketeers, the best thing about them is if you don't come up with four Ps or three As or something like that, nobody gives them enough bhav. So I've also done that and I've come up with five Cs as far as, you know, causal uh, things that create trends really, keeping an individual or a human being or a patient in mind. And the first thing really is, the first C really is consciousness. Today, every person is conscious about health and wellness. Whether COVID did that, whether looking good on Instagram did that to them, I don't know. But the point is today, everybody is conscious of their health and wellness. So as marketeers, what are the trends that come out is something that's what we need to see. Can we bring in awareness? of diseases, can we bring in awareness of um, uh, cures, uh, very broadly speaking. So that's what you as a digital marketeer need to focus on. How can I bring in more consciousness so that he's drawn into our product or our service or whatever it may be? That's the first C. The second C I call is control. Today, every individual wants to be in control of his or her health and wellness. It's as simple as that. How does that relate to a digital thing? Whether it's going to be wearables, whether it's going to be internet of things that, you know, okay, I have a reminder or an alert that comes to me that spikes me to take a, a medicine in time, whatever it may be, how can I then as a digital marketer leverage that? You know, so getting into the mind of a, a patient or an individual who wants to take things into control, personalized, they want to do it themselves. They're looking at personalized diet charts coming in for them. How can I provide that for them as a digital marketer? What is it that I can play on? That's the second C really with an individual. The third thing is, and everybody from the pharma industry will tell you, it's all about the patient journey. Yes, it is, but it is care at the end of it all. That's something, it has to be outcome-based care. How can that care be given? Now, is this what my target audience is thinking, how can I leverage in digital into this? What can I do for care? 
Uh, can I make it personalized again? Uh, how can my communication go out to them? So look at these three behaviors as far as the individual is concerned. Now we're all in companies. The other C related to more of, you know, as marketeers doing things themselves is something that I call of convergence. Now convergence, the simplest thing today everything, everybody thinks of is health and technology and that's actually the trend that's going to catch up and is already there. The bus is already moving. If you're not on the bus and like I did, like the way she brought it out that pharma industry has been rather slow in not just adapting to or adopting but even absorbing technology uh, really. Uh, you know, I was at a panel uh, some time back and an, a fellow farmer from a ranked uh, f uh, top five companies was also on the panel. He didn't like that, so he said, no, 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 no. So I asked him a simple question. I said, when was the last time you actually went to a bank? I mean, you're doing everything sitting at home on your device, but tell me, before COVID, how often did you actually get into telemedicine or Practo or whatever those other platforms may be? We have been late as an industry to absorb digital technology. And I'm not talking manufacturing, I'm not talking research and development. Actually, I'm also talking research and development here. How much of AI have we leveraged uh, in uh, NDD, a new drug discovery coming about? I mean, the fact of the matter is we hardly have an NDD as a country today. Uh, but we have been rather slow in adoption of digital. But I think digital marketing also we've been slow, but I think we're on the bus now, we just need to propel further. So it's about convergence. It's not just convergence about health and technology. When I look at conversion, uh, uh, convergence, I look at data. Everything that we have has to be a data-driven driven decision. And data is not just about, oh, okay, how many hits, this, that, and the other. Every little thing that concerns a patient or concerns an individual, what is he doing, how is he, where does he work, every little thing is an input to you. AI can get that for you. AI is listening at all points of time. And therefore, what you need to do is to focus on this aspect, firstly, health and technology, and second, get data to everything that you do. Whatever you do based on a data decision will willy-nilly be absolutely correct. And the last C, when we talk about companies at our levels, I talk about collaboration. Today, without collaboration, you can do nothing, even in the digital health tech space. What is collaboration? Collaboration can be big plus big. A fine example could be the vaccines that came about, Pfizer collaborating with BioN and being manufactured by Sanofi, arc rivals otherwise, but they collaborated for a cause at that point of time. It could be big and small, a big pharma company collaborating. Like we were at a, you know, a pre-meet, all of us were sitting, and we were trying to see how we, we can help each other. NH said, I'll step in and help you because he's into uh, uh, sanitary napkins and things like that. I was trying to get a piece of the cake and tell him, I, uh, you know, three gynecology teams from the others report into me. So, and I cover 30,000 uh, gynecologists every day. Can I collaborate with him? So I'm not saying I'm big and he's small, but I'm just giving you an example how collaboration also works. Small and small also works. So you need to have a collaborative mindset, bring in the digital piece into it, and you will see that we guys are actually rocking. I've, I think, taken a little more than the time that you allotted to me. My apologies for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Atul. Uh, I think I was just telling somebody this, a uh, um, lot can happen over coffee has near, never really worked for me, but I think it has worked for Atul, it has worked for Karthik also. I think many of these uh, new alliances happened over coffee. That's a, uh, that's a nice thing. Uh, there is one very important thing which you said, uh, Atul, was of your all the C's which are here. Since we are in healthcare, and care I think is a very, very big part of healthcare, I would like to move that question just a little bit more to Ashish since they are in the service. Uh, industry, they are in the healthcare services. Do you see as Ashish um, care is something which is going to be digitalized and which is digitalized right now? I, I'm going a little off my questions which I've uh, sent to you earlier, but I think it's an interesting conversation to see whether how much of this care is really going to go into digital marketing and how much are you uh, going to talk about it? So I'll take the leaf from what Atul sir was saying about control and care will go hand in hand. It's working. It's working. So I'm saying um, control and care will go hand in hand.
there's already a lot of effort that has been put but i think uh, from just adding another c that is the consumer and what's missing out right now from both um, the health and pharma industry i'm being an outsider just a year into the service delivery model what we are missing out you're building big ecosystems but which is minus consumer so the minute you put consumer into it the care will automatically be into his or her control thus you need a medium which is served at right in their palms so i think that ecosystem follows brilliantly well yeah yeah i think it does and it should also because that's what we are all about within the healthcare i think care has to become like a really really big component and if digital we have to use it we have to put it to good use over there um uh, moving to our next question is about how is it that we are going to use data uh, to drive um digital marketing uh, many have done it i think galderma has done it very well with citafel and we would like to hear from uh, sunil how do you think it works and uh, what are the good learnings from it so uh, i think i believe there's enough spoken about data people say it's oil fuel gold silver platinum and i think a lot of word has been given but uh, if you see that data is not just a data data and technology is what create an experience so i am nodding and uh, not adding another c i am adding an e so it's all about experiences and when we saying that we want to partner with each other, each other because consumer when they look today we all look that we want to sell our product let's say i want to sell only set up fill or something else but i think ultimately we all come together to create an experience for the consumer i think data there are a lot of articles published recently if we all know that there's a month back there's an article that using data and ai engine predicted a uh, breast cancer which supposed to happen after 2 years from that data right there is a scientist called scott hayden who uh, put it some sensors into a, your mattress and he analyzed that how you sleep what uh, deep your sleep how you moving you not moving so just think hypothetically that you using that mattress you slept deep sleep for four hours you get up in the morning you set up your watch thinking that i'll do a 30 minute cardio and watch it saying sorry you not slept well you just do 10 minute cardio you do a 10 minute cardio then you move towards your freezer and say think that i'll have to eat something and then your freezer saying okay hello you you have not slept well you just did 10 minute cardio you only drink juices so how this is going to possible this is all will be possible using the data and how the data will be integrated so if we look there is no one company who can do this there's a multiple company will come together utilize the data very well and then create experiences now coming into our industry like skin care yes we are utilizing data how effectively it's working it's working very for us but if you ask me what is going to happen in 3 years using data we all know there are a lot of apps available online which can analyze your face and tell you that your skin is oily your skin is dry your skin is combination skin and everybody use the same product but let's say company come with a offering that okay you use my app analyze your skin and then after that you sign a subscription that for next one years you utilize my product but i'll create a product which is specific to suni nobody will have that kind of i i say precision for a consumer so when you create that product give it to that sunil i'm sure not noticing for one year but using for so many years so then what you creating there is experience individualized personalized and this all possible with the data otherwise it's not happen so what you're saying is using of data for more personalization for more uh, personalized experiences have you begun doing that do you have any kind of um, life cases that you might be putting that to use though i don't very very much like this word data i don't want to be a data but yeah that's how it's being used but, I, but in these days data is not data so in these days everybody is individual and if you yeah. ask us have we utilizing yes we are yeah. so we analyzing who's buying our cleanser if he's what is the frequency they buying how can i auto send him the another third order after analyzing two purchases if he's buying only two what i can purchase another thing so sure. data is not a data for us at these days it's each individual their patterns of buying consuming behaving with us and then accordingly we we interact with them using our marketing channels it may be your sales force marketing cloud then at you can add up to whatsapp sms and everything into that and this is how we are using that data right Uh, are there any kind of patterns which you are seeing particularly to the say for example dermatology industry where you see that uh, you know this is how you are probably going to be looking at data uh, in the future and this is how you are going to use it in uh, the digital marketing space 
So I think there are different, different places where the data has been utilized. Uh, and in these days, if you see the com companies who are particularly in dermatology creating products for the skincare, if you see the entire market now moving into derma cosmetic, it's not only cosmetic, derma cosmetic. Now I'm sure people sitting here, 50% of them know what is niacinamide, what is hyaluronic acid and all that. If you see now, companies started mentioning this. So companies making products humanized, not doctorized. So they understood the pattern that what consumers are searching for, what is their need, what are the ingredients, or rather than doctor writing it before that even consumer know what is his skin needed. And that's where you, you come into analyzing those data that what each consumer is using or searching for it. Sure. I think a point well taken because m many times data itself can drive innovation after you see the trends which are happening. Um, Coming to our next question is, which is very, very important, talked about very greatly within the digital marketing space. Everybody is going crazy with it. Everybody is just talking content, content, content all the time. Now, how do you, what are the latest things in content and uh, what is something special that you're doing with this content? Um, and what are the great learnings for, especially for me as a marketer for this panel here and also for our, for our audiences? Um, I would like to pitch that to, to Karthik. Um, before you actually get on to the content, it would be nice, Karthik, if you tell us the space that you're in and where you're using the content just for our audiences so that they understand especially the uh, category that you're in and the products that you're, um, that you're marketing. Absolutely. I would be happy to. So I represent Noble Hygiene. We are the category leaders for 23 years in adult diapers. We have the largest Indian baby diaper brand. We also have a sanitary napkin brand called Rio, which was the first one to launch heavy flow, heavy flow products in the category. And all of this uh, came out from one of the C's, which you know Ashish very graciously added, which is consumer. Um, I think being a blend of FMCG and healthcare, that's always put us far more closer to a consumer than we would say from any other category, uh, mostly which would be prescriptive in nature. Um, to swing back to content, right, I think we've leveraged this in, uh, in a multitude of ways. And one of the key things here is personalization. And I'm going to share some tactical inputs, you know, stuff that has worked for us and we've experimented and we've learned for the benefit of everyone. Um, personalization has now gone beyond language. Um, it's gone beyond cohorts and lookalike audiences, right? Um, I see a lot of marketeers and brand owners trying to figure, okay, content, content, etc. But there is no power unless you can create sheer volume of content because that is what allows you to A-B test that with the right kind of cohorts. So for us, when you're talking about incontinence with adult diapers, anyways, a massively taboo topic. And I guarantee that half the room here, you have either grandparents or your own parents in your home struggling with this issue and they haven't spoken to you about it. Now, incontinence can be caused by diabetes, it can be caused by prostate issues. It's a regular feature in post-birth for women. And how much conversation do we see around that? Now, my team in-house, we have developed the capability with our own designers on stack using some of these beautiful generative AI tools to spin out 30, 40 creatives on, you know, a semi on a 48-hour cycle. So a diabetes search user is going to see a very different line of communication as would a mother who is trying to look, right? And again, consumer is when uh, how you tie this all together. So for a mother, a very beautiful verbatim is, you know, when you laugh or when you sneeze, you feel a few drops come out. And the moment you mention that in a very snappy five-line copy, which you can use AI tools for as well, suddenly you start seeing conversion rates go up. If you know your people well and if you've become really good at marketing the appropriate kind of content to them. So my team, very proudly, we've received 3,000, 4,000 shares on our posts, on our brands, without a single rupee spent. This has happened on Rio. We've received 4,000, 5,000 engagements, and I qualify engagement as a comment or a share, um, again, on like a 500 rupee spend on an adult diaper category, which, let's be honest, no one wants to interact with on a daily basis, right? And I would urge everyone in the audience to think of content far beyond the single frame single frameworks that you're thinking of. Um, for, for us, one of the most vibrant pieces of content that we do is ORM. So for all our ORM across our brands is personalized. And I would vouch all of you to think of how much value that would add if you get a personalized comment on every single thing that you post with the brand. Um, for the price of two mainstream influencers campaigns in a year, you can practically set up your own team and get far better strike rates and add genuine value to your own end consumers. So. 
a myriad ways to think about content. I think you have to expand your framework about it and you see opportunities just blossom. Thank you. Um, Ashish, also, I think I would like to ask this uh, content question to you, especially because you're a service brand. And uh, how do you look at content for um, Narayana Health? And I, I, before that, I also wanted to check, has your kind of content, I think there has been a change in your position from Narayana Radhyala, you've moved to Narayana Health. Has that, you know, influenced your content in any which way? Absolutely, yes, because the thought process was to open up ourselves up for larger audiences in terms of that you are not being categorized as just one department hospital, you are multi. So that means that is the way the business was going and it was required to make that shift as well. And they did it um, 2017 and post that it has been a good, decent story. Uh, but if I, if I pick up the content conversation, of course, what uh, Karthik was speaking about comes from the kind of consumer that they are working with. We being no tangible product, all entirely service, uh, it works with us not just only from a point of view of saying that our doctors have done some milestone surgeries, usually has been a typical content driving force for the entire industry. And when you see those testimonies, when you see the, that, say, for instance, content going out of uh, any healthcare brand, they all are similar. Just remove the logo and put anyone, they will be absolutely same. So that differentiation, why? Because the content, the consumer, uh, and uh, the milestone is something that what not consumer, every consumer is looking for. Right. So they, again, personalization is one way where you are working towards what my big funnel user wants and then you bring your entire strategy about solving, making it easy, bringing it to lay a layman, not having a CABG thrown at a neck of one of the consumers to understand that this is what my content piece and me as a brand look like. Those are hygiene. The minute you sol start solving for easy, understandable content and I think content is equally proportional to the span of time we all have from a days of watching an entire half an hour episode, sitting down with the entire family to a 30 second ad read, that's equally proportional to the, the luxury of time we have. So from a marketing based point of view, you need to move to that uh, and map yourself as a brand to that journey as well. And uh, there's nothing better than personalization in service care as well. Thank you very much. Uh, so would you say that, you know, to be, say for example, to be, um, good content on social media. You really don't need to be a marketeer, you need to be a member of the community. Only then you can be a great marketeer. If you try to be a marketeer, maybe then you're producing material which you would like to, uh, you know, put out. Uh, do you consider yourself to be like a part of the member of, the, of social media and then think of the content? So I'll say that it's a kind of a very thin line because both ways it can damage because suddenly if you're part of the community you're thinking very very differently uh, so it's always the balancing game but if yes if you are as a marketer able to do that i think there is no better ticket golden ticket for you sure um i think i've been wanting to talk to uh, ritu for a long time um do you have any uh, great cases or examples that you would like to share with our audiences on how um, Bayer has used digital marketing um, with their audiences in any space, whether it is physicians, consumers, anything that you can share with us? Sure. Uh, I think, uh, so before I, before I share an example uh, or a couple of examples of uh, how we've used digital marketing, uh, or effectively used digital marketing uh, for driving brands to the consumers. So one of the questions I often ask is, so what is, what is effective digital marketing really mean? And I think there were lots of different things that we, we heard in terms of the right consumer, the right content, uh, the, uh, the right uh, context. So, to me, uh, effective digital marketing is really about when we bring all of this together. So it's really about reaching out with the right content 
to the right consumer at the right time in a relevant context. And when we, when we try to get all of these right or relevant is when we create magic in terms of uh, marketing or reaching out to our consumers. And this is true whether it is digital marketing or marketing otherwise. What digital marketing has done or what digital has done is that it has made getting these rights a lot easier because gone are the days when you could only reach out consumers from a demographic perspective. So today we are talking about, you know, whether when consumers are using, uh, are, they know about niacinamide, so you can actually find out which consumers are looking for niacinamide products and you can target them. So that is what digital has made possible. Identifying those right consumers as per the brand strategy and developing the right content for them. When I came into Bayer three years back from an FMCG background, one of the things I very often heard was that healthcare is boring. What interesting stuff are we going to do here? And I think one of the things we tried to do was change that. We talked a lot about how healthcare has been a little bit late to the party of digital marketing. I think healthcare has also been a little late to getting the right content, which is simple and engaging for consumers to understand. So, uh, and within healthcare, I think pharma specifically, because it's so, there's so much science to it, how do you really tell that science to the consumer in a way which is simple to understand but also memorable? So that is really, really important and I think that's the transition that is happening now. Uh, and that's helping a lot because you can't expect the consumers to understand the most complicated science and then be able to use the products themselves, unless we are talking about prescription where uh, consumer, consumers are patients and they are rather acting on a prescription given by a doctor. So when it comes to self-care and when we are expecting consumers to buy on their own, it becomes very important that the content is also uh, simple and interesting or engaging. So one of the things that we've tried to do is, one, talk to the consumers in a more contextual way. So a simple example I would give is that when we relaunched Saradon, now headache is something which has 100% incidence. It is relevant to everybody. However, different people get headache in different contexts. It could, for a, for a homemaker, it could be because of the endless work that she does for making everything happen. For a, uh, for a, for a uh, uh, gig worker, it could be to do with the, with the hours, changing hours that they work on, or for somebody it could be because of the EMI pressure or the financial troubles that they have. So one of the simple things that we did in the content was to create, I would not call it personalized, but, personalized, but contextual content, and then using digital, target that content, giving the right context of that headache, to those individuals. So somebody who's actually looking for some financial related problems, you can serve a different piece of content. Versus a homemaker, you can serve a very different piece of content on digital. Yeah. And that has worked very well for us. In fact, when we, uh, so when we started off, uh, our, our objective really was to, uh, was to get consumers to act on headache because one of the things that we, understood from our, uh, from our consumer deep dives was that Indians being highly resilient, they don't act very soon on headache and they try to, you know, use everything possible till it's not, uh, they're not able to bear the headache and then they take a pill. So one of the things we tried to do was drive that relevance and uh, using digital, uh, using social media, creating topical content, doing partnerships to create more engaging content, all of this has worked very beautifully for us to the extent that we've seen almost 9% more users enter the category of uh, headache pills as a result of these interventions. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I think a uh, uh, good learning there. Um, yes, science is boring and it need not be. It's our job to make science sexy. And if it is not, we are not going to be able to do a very good job of um, marketing it. Um, well, thank you so much 
for your time, everybody. It was a great learning for me personally, and I hope for our audiences also. I don't know, they've been sending me tweets now to wrap it up. I, do we have any uh, time for any questions? Or uh, just in case if somebody has a question, uh, it'd be great. Uh, so maybe just one, one question? It's open. It's an open mic, just in case if you have a question. Open, we'd open to anybody for a question. They don't want their vote. There is, there is a gentleman <laughs> right there. <laughs> yes, please. Hi. Uh, thank you. Um, sorry, I was kind of late, uh, but uh, I, I come from Galdama. Um, uh, handle the set of a baby portfolio. Um, something that I want to ask with uh, with the new age digital and and we, as we see a lot of healthcare brands are moving towards consumers. Uh, there there is a lot of opportunity wherein we build the HCP through digital. So uh, as a marketer, how much critical is it to ensure that we engage with our set of doctors, that is dermas, pedias, through uh, digital platforms? Uh, uh, I, I need to understand, does it make sense uh, wherein, you know, you have a touch point wherein your person directly reaches out to that uh, individual and has that personal touch uh, a couple of minutes or, or say around 30 odd seconds that he spends inside a cabin versus uh, a digital uh, intervention wherein you're reaching to mass number of doctors and you're not really sure if it is, uh, I mean, the conversion metrics are very different as compared to what we see in consumers. Yeah, you should. Sure. 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 Please sure. That's why I could have answered, but he will not like. So I'll tell you what, the, the work of the platform is to bring the doctor and the patient to be patient, I will say the consumer closer, right? That's the all the care part that we were discussing. It's relevant, why? Because that consumer is already searching. It's not about that 30 second in the cabin, but after that, is the engagement or before that is the questions that I'm trying to get answered for myself, right, as a patient. So it's, um, I can talk about, we have some 30 plus doctors on, on board and we are running almost 800 plus uh, digital platform equivalents for them, whether be it their GBPs, be it their profiles, be it their Twitter handles by the way. So we are running that and that's a very core strategy for us to bring closer to consumer. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. And I think any more questions, we can take uh, it offline and during our conversation, we are running short of time. Thank you. <laughs>